Summary of Orinoco by Afra Ben The story of Orinoco is told from the point of view of a female narrator, who may very well be Afra Ben herself. The person telling the story says they knew Orinoco when he was being held captive in Suriname, South America. In the story, which takes place in the 1660s, Suriname is a British colony. Orinoco is not just any slave, as the full title of the book says. He is the prince of an African country called Coromanchin, which is possibly modern-day Ghana and the last member of a royal family. Coromanchin is a brave and warlike country that sells prisoners of war to Western ships as part of the transatlantic slave trade. As a child, Orinoco grew up away from the court. Imawinda's father taught him how to be a great military leader. During a fierce fight one day, Imawinda's father takes an arrow to the eye and saves Orinoco's life. Orinoco, who is 17 years old, is made general and goes back to court as a handsome and smart young man. The storyteller spends a lot of time talking about Orinoco's good qualities. They are especially interested in talking about how beautiful he is, which is a mix of Roman and African features. When Orinoco is at court, he goes to see Imawinda, the beautiful and good daughter of his foster father. They fall in love right away. Even though they are getting married, Orinoco still has to ask his grandpa, the king, for permission because that is how things are done in that society. But the king, who is a horny old man, hears about how beautiful Imawinda is. Seeing her at court makes him decide that she should be one of his concubines. The king sends Orinoco the royal veil while he is out hunting. The veil is a sign for pretty women to come to court. Imawinda has to do what she is told. Imawinda is locked up at the Oten, the king's pleasure house, away from her true love. She is still a virgin, so she tries to avoid the king's approaches as much as possible. The strict rules of the Oten mean that Orinoco can't see Imawinda until the king asks him to. People around them try to convince them not to stay together, but the lovers are still committed to each other. Orinoco knows that Imawinda wants to return to him because she sneaks looks at him when she visits the Oten and from Onahal, one of the king's old wives. It is important for Orinoco to finish his marriage to Imawinda before he goes to war. He comes up with a plan to do it with the help of his good friend and fellow fighter, Aboan. A boy tempts Onahal, who agrees right away to help the lovers. That night, Orinoco and Imawinda spend the night together. The king was worried that something might happen, so he sent his guard to talk to Orinoco. Unfortunately, Orinoco ran to the front lines of the fight. Imawinda cheated on her husband, so the king sold her into slavery as a shameful penalty. He then told Orinoco that she had been killed. Orinoco gives up his will to live and fight when he hears this. He leaves his men and goes back to his tent. But just as they are about to lose, Orinoco wakes up from his sweet sleep and leads his army to victory. When an English captain of the sea comes to Coromanchin, Orinoco treats him like a royal guest. But the captain lies to Orinoco by asking him to come on board his ship and then taking him and a hundred of Orinoco's servants hostage. Orinoco is taken by the captain across the Atlantic to Suriname, where he is sold to Trefri, a smart and kind slave owner. Trefri tells Orinoco his name is Caesar and says he will help him get free one day. Trefri also brings Caesar and Imawinda back together without meaning to. Trefri knows Imawinda as Clemine. Caesar and Clemine finally get married, but it's not a happy ending. They have a child and spend their days socializing with the white nobles, who accept them right away because they are noble, good, and beautiful. Caesar gets more and more antsy and wants to take his new family back home as Imawinda's pregnancy grows. He respects some white people, like Trefri and the storyteller, but he is also right to be suspicious of the long wait in his release. He thinks he will be lied to again and that his family will stay slaves. It is true that Deputy Governor Bayam, who is part of the colonial government in Suriname and wants to keep Caesar a slave, has this exact plan. Caesar, being a man of action, decides to do something about it himself and get the slaves to run away. With Caesar's help, they are able to get away, but when the white residents come after them, their fun ends. 
The slaves, except for Caesar's friend Tuscan, run away from the group, leaving Caesar and Imoinda, who is heavily pregnant, to face the farm owners. In a brave battle, they all hurt Byam in the shoulder with a poisoned arrow shot by Imoinda. Byam talks Caesar into giving up quietly with the help of Trefri and offers to do everything Caesar asks. They make a deal, but Byam breaks it almost right away. He locks Imoinda up and whips Tuscan and Caesar very badly. Now that Caesar is fully aware of Byam's betrayal, he vows to get even. With Imoinda's permission and blessing, he kills her and their child to save them from more pain. Caesar then fails to get back at Byam because he passes out from grief while standing next to the body of his wife. When Caesar's enemies from the colonies come to find him, his friends save him against his will. He tells them about his plan to kill Byam while he is sick and about to die. They try to get him to give up on this idea and focus on getting better. One day, Byam asks the cruel Irishman Bannister to take Caesar hostage. Caesar is again chained to the stake and slowly dissected and he died in without making any sound. About the author. Ben's life is largely unknown. There are no records of her date and place of birth, but it is known that she was British. Some people think that Ben herself hid or burned information about her life. She may have lived for a while in Suriname, South America, a European sugar settlement. She may have been married to a man named Johann Ben and may have been a spy for King Charles II. After going back to England, Ben lost a lot of money. To make money and stay out of debtor's jail, she wrote. She wrote a lot for almost 20 years. Her body of work includes plays, translations, and stories in writing. She was a famous playwright in the 1600s and is thought to be one of the first English writers. She was involved in London's theatre scene while she was living and was friends with famous writers like John Dryden. The place where she is buried is Westminster Abbey. Most people know her for the short story Orinoco. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.